Hello guys, we're doing another scratch build today. Usually I go at my scratch builds just by kind of working with chaos, but I decided to sit down and draw it out, see what results would come through. I kind of liked this idea of like a water tower slash silo type of thing. Something with rails, electronic parts, and a raised platform. I eventually found something I liked and decided to settle on that. For the base of this whole thing, I used corrugated plastic card, cork board, and some foam. For those weird top plastic indentations that bottles come with, I chose a little bit of cardboard just to cover those up and cut them to size. Instead of using PVA glue, I decided to use super glue. PVA glue would have caused some warpage in the cardboard, where super glue will keep it down, maybe not as strong, but it'll do the job. So I went about sanding those cardboard tops that I laid on the bottles, and in the end it still left a little bit of a ledge. I wish I kind of went back through with some spackle or some PVA glue to really fill up those gaps and make it a smooth transition, but you know, you live and you learn. This is my bits collection so far. I just barely started it because I decided, you know what, if I'm really going to go all out on the terrain, I better start collecting, and I'm pretty happy with what I got, but eventually I hope to grow this bits collection even more. From what I've learned from this hobby is that the smaller the details, the more massive and large the scale of the terrain tend to feel. Two things that bits do that are really awesome. One, it gives a sense of scale to terrain. The smaller the bits, the bigger the terrain seems to be. The second thing is that bits tend to almost inspire my work. I looked at this little fan blade thing that I cut up into pieces and I thought, swamp cooler, so we use that. Then there was this little rectangular object or whatever it is and I thought that kind of looks like an electrical panel or something and so that ended up working too and it's the awesome part about bits and bits collecting you never know exactly what you'll find and you'll never know exactly what you'll need but eventually it comes out at you and it's awesome when it does
it's funny what we imagine inside our heads because like i never drew it out to be a platform this whole project i just drew it out as like a floor but when i looked at it i was like oh it needs to be up like it just needs to be like two stories taller and so it's funny what comes to fruition in the end versus like what we plan out in the beginning and i'm just glad i found these tubes because i feel like it gives the whole project a sense of scale And now for my favorite footage I captured, the Forbidden Froster. Yes, I want to lick it too, but no, you shouldn't. And it's just so satisfying to watch. Like, this is probably my favorite footage and I want to get more clips like this. I'm going to aim for more clips like this because it's just so cool to look at. So here's a really cheap and easy solution to chipping. I know there's a lot of fancy chipping products out there and there's nothing wrong with that at all, but since I'm kind of a hobbyist on a budget, I go for this method instead. And I don't know where I learned it, but it works perfectly. Basically cover your objects in a rust color. You can do a variation or just a plain orange like I did. After that, I grabbed some dollar store hairspray and did three thick coats of this stuff onto these objects. And then we're gonna lay out our airbrush base color. I chose a army green and a kind of off white for these two tanker silo things. Sadly, I didn't get any footage of the green uh, uh, silo being colored. After that, take a toothpick and a little bit of uh, paint water and simply brush that on and chip, chip, chip away. It is super satisfying and I just can't get enough of it.
Now that we were all done with airbrush work and chipping, I decided to work on cleaning up that overspray with a basic craft black paint and then building my way up from black to gray to white with a dry brush just to start making a concrete type of look for that base. Next up was painting the metallics. I used a variety of metallics from Citadel Iron Warriors, Lead Belcher, and some stuff from Vallejo like a basic silver. There's nothing fancy here, just grab your favorite metallic paints and kind of start slapping them on. We'll start adding details and rust effects in just a sec here. For the rust effect, I just pick some cheap, simple craft paint because it's easy and they're widely accessible. I like to go with folk art. They have a great variety of metallics and uh, they have a terracotta and a red I really, really enjoy. I just took those and simply streaked it across some surfaces, trying to not glob on the paint and kind of dry brush it here and there. If you play around with it, you'll figure it out for sure. Next up is my absolutely favorite freaking oil wash, uh, Streaking Grime. I'm in no way sponsored, but gosh, this product is just awesome. I used to use acrylic washes all the time to kind of substitute for this, but it just doesn't do the same thing. If you've ever tried out this stuff, you'll have this moment of going, ah, I just ruined my project. But in fact, no, you didn't. You just got thrown those white spirits and it's like magic. All right, with that, we're basically at the end. Those white spirits have done their job, the grime is placed, the setting is set, and now let's get some close-up shots of the end result. I'm really sad. Uh, <laughs> I'm really sad. Even box not is sad. I, I just spilt pigment powder all over my black pants, 
And I just ruined my like other pair this week. I I'm usually not this messy. Um hi. Hello. How's it going? This was a fun build. Um it was a build intended for a model. And at the end of the day, I look at it and I'm I'm realizing I don't really need it to be for that model on its own. It's a it's a really good build. Um, there's a couple imperfections here and there that I, I would go back and change. Um, some things that I thought would like, f like be a more, f um, a little more fleshed out. Um, I want more bits and details on this thing because quite frankly, there's a lot of details, um, that could really exaggerate like the, the, the idea of size, um, smaller things tend to make things look larger. And so like, I would love to, if I had a 3d printer, which I might in the future have one, um, to like put a little control panel somewhere and really make this thing kind of come together. But I thought, you know, finished, but not perfect. And that's okay. And, um, you know, I have fun regardless, kind of seeing junk turn into stuff I can use later is it's just freaking awesome. It's just awesome. You know, I, I have a great time every time. So, um, I'm a little addicted to building terrain. It's a, it's fun. Um, now looking at it, it would be kind of cool to make like a giant kill team board out of like leveled up pieces like this, like, like all on pillars might be an idea. Maybe number three, maybe this number three might be one of like, I don't know, couple of them, 10, 12, who knows, you know, it might be pretty cool. Um, thank you so much for watching. And, um, if you enjoyed, please subscribe down below. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what to build next or what to paint or what to do in general, send me some ideas. I would love to see them. I'd love to give out tips and stuff and, or do whatever I can do to, uh, make this channel even more fun for you guys as well. Um, I can't be the only one having fun here. Um, thank you for supporting me in box Not. And, um, we have a Reddit account, uh, as well to follow us on. Um, it's called not the sandwich. Check that one out. We also have another account, um, on Instagram called the box, not or box, not uh, we, we claimed it. We're the first. So that's pretty fun. Um, and yeah, yeah. Finished, but not perfect is the, is the quote today. And I hope that kind of inspires you guys to finish things whether they're perfect or not. Thank you so much for watching.